Tonight, we welcome back Captain Max Hardberger to share first-hand experience in Somalia. Max's early career includes stints as a flight instructor, crop duster pilot, a private investigator, a crewman on supply boats in the Gulf of Mexico, a mud engineer in offshore and Central American oil fields, and a captain on small ships carrying cargo around the Caribbean. During the 90s, he worked as a port captain and marine surveyor while studying law. After helping a number of clients whose ships had been seized by corrupt courts in outlaw countries, Max gained a reputation in Caribbean shipping circles as a ship owner's fixer. In 2010, Max's memoir of his adventures rescuing ships seized was published by Random House, Imprint, and last month, a major Hollywood producer optioned the book for a television series. Max has returned from helping to build a port in Tabio, Somalia, as well as working with the new Somali government to build other infrastructure in that child country. Ladies and gentlemen, we welcome to Captain Back Herbert. It's certainly refreshing to be back in the land of the civilized after uh, four months in Somalia. The way I got involved, actually, was that a group of Somalis in, of all places, Columbus, Ohio, wanted to get rid of the pirates uh, off the coast of Hobio. Uh, they were, most of the people I was talking to were from the Hobio area, and um, the economic development of the region was being, <coughs> shall we say, severely impacted by the pirates. People were not coming into Somalia to invest. And these Somalis who were diaspora Somalis, in other words, Somalis who had moved out of Somalia after the Civil War and were living, some of them in, a lot of them in uh, Minneapolis, a lot of them in Columbus, and the diaspora was getting together to try to rebuild Somalia, and therefore they wanted to get rid of the pirates. Opio was infam infamously known as the, uh, the center of Somali piracy, and they wanted to do something about that. And so they looked me up on the internet. They said, well, here's a guy who gets ships back from illegal seizures. What could be more illegal a seizure than a piracy? So I said, well, OK. I, I kind of like the idea of working on behalf of the government. Usually, it's the government that's trying to catch me. So <laughs> I came up with a plan. Port Developers International. Sounded good to me. And I came up with a head with a, with a, a uh, logo and uh, a, a, a prospectus about how the future of Somalia was in building a port in Hobio. I'd never been to Hobio. I had looked at it on on uh, on Google Earth and it didn't look very prepossessing, but that doesn't you know stop me when I'm drawing up a business plan. So I was going. I have a team of about 12 guys, uh, ex-military fellows, uh, and some very impressive fellows. We were, we we're building a port. What? Pirate ships? We care nothing about pirate ships. We only want to build a port. Next thing you know, the Somalis are raising money for the port of Hobio. <laughs> the next thing you know, they've got a quarter million dollars in the bank, and they're telling me, go to Hobio and build the port. This is after I came back to the States. You know. Four months later, we still had not started building the port. Four months of discussions, of negotiations, of gun battles. Every time we tried to get to Hobio to build a port, we'd get, we'd get the telephone call. First thing we realized there are no secrets in Somalia at all. Everybody in Somalia knows everything else that's going on in Somalia. Every camel herder in Somalia has a cell phone. The reason that Somalia recently became a pirate haven is because simply there was no government to stop them from having a place where they could keep their ships. That is the sine qua non of piracy in terms of holding ships for ransom. You can grab individuals and take them into the interior, but a ship has got to have some place on the coast where you can hold it until you can make the arrangements for ransom and when you can, so you can get the ransom money before you release the ship. The, the worst place for piracy now is the west coast of Africa. But even there, there are no governments in the west coast of Africa that are so powerless 
that they cannot stop piracy. So what happens now is the pirates are taking hostages off the vessels, or the, the new thing is to grab a tanker, take it up a creek, discharge all the hydrocarbons off of it, and then get out of there and leave the vessel for when the government forces finally do arrive. One problem in Somalia for the governments, and not just the Gamuda government, but all the governments, is the cost of waging war. A single nine millimeter round that costs 30 cents in the United States costs 10 US dollars in Somalia. So the, the, the general told me, quite honestly, I'd like to fight the pirates. Where's the money going to come from? He doesn't have the money, and he has to pay his militia. Somali currency is the US dollar. They, like, like uh, Ecuador and Panama and Costa Rica, they've realized that there's no point trying to maintain their own currency. Somalis don't have to carry money around. In fact, probably in Somalia it's a good idea not to carry money around. If I go into a store and I want to buy, let's say, two dollars worth of cookies, I ask the store lady what her phone number is, or her cell phone, then I get on my cell phone, and there's a service called Harmood, and so I will get on her mood and I will transfer two dollars to her phone. Her phone rings. It says, you received two dollars. She hands me my cookies. The situation now with me is that I told the Somalis that you're going to have to resolve your clan conflicts. I'm going back to the States for a month. That was three months ago. I'm going back to the States for a month and uh, when you guys get it together, I'll come back. Well, they're still sending me emails saying, oh, you know, we've reached a deal with the Saliban and uh, everything's good and you're ready to come back. And then another one of my Somali friends will send me another email saying, don't come back, Saliban wants to kill you. So, I don't know what the answer is going to be, but I certainly do hope, because I have a great deal of respect for the Somali people, and I really do hope that they, they manage to work out these issues and that we can go back and, and do a report.